Okay, on tonight's assignment, we're adding and subtracting mixed numbers. And occasionally when you're subtracting mixed numbers, you need to do some borrowing. And so that's why I chose problem number 15. Before we can do anything uh, with this subtraction, we have to recognize what we're subtracting. We have 9 and 5 ninths minus 0 and 5 sixths. Um, you wouldn't usually show the 0, but I'm just showing the 0 to show that I have 0 holes and 5 sixths is my fractional part. Up here I have 9 holes and 5 ninths is my fractional part. I could subtract 0 holes from 9 holes and get 9 because they're like terms, but I cannot subtract 5 sixths from 5 ninths because they have different size pieces. I need a common denominator. And so I don't usually ask you to do the pause of this early in the video, but because this is what we've been practicing for the last couple of days, why don't you find some way to find the LCM of 9 and 6 and then convert these fractional parts into that common denominator and then come back and check your work on that part before we continue. Paused. Okay, there's different ways to get the LCM when the numbers are this small, especially when there's only two of them. I think it's probably easiest to just think about multiples of 9. The next multiple of 9, two nines is 18, and 6 can become 18 because 18 is also a multiple of 6. And so if I convert these two fractions, 5 ninths and 5 sixths, into 18 ths, then I'll have a common denominator. Ninths can be multiplied by halves to get 18 ths, and so I need to multiply by 2 halves to get my whole 5 ninths. 5 times 2 is 10. 10 18 ths is just 5 ninths written a different way. 6 can become 18 ths if you multiply by thirds. So I need to multiply 5 sixths by 3 thirds. It's another version of 1 using the multiplicative identity. 5 times 3 is 15. And so when I rewrite the, these, this uh, subtraction expression, we have 9 and 10 eighteenths minus, I'm not going to show the zero holes, but I will show the 15 eighteenths. And we're ready to subtract, at least we have like terms, but, but then we have a problem. I can't subtract 15 eighteenths from 10 eighteenths without getting a negative fractional part, and we'd like to avoid that. It's like if you had 25 minus 8, you wouldn't want to subtract the 8 ones from the 5 ones because you get negative 3. And so using this algorithm, we would, we would typically borrow from the two tens, borrow 110, and that 110 is 10 ones, and we would combine the 10 ones with the 5 ones so that we could then subtract and get a positive uh, digit in the ones place. And so when we, when we subtract with fractions, when we need to borrow, it's the same idea. I would like to have more 18ths, just like over here, I would like to have more ones. And I have plenty of 18ths, they're just all tied up in these nine holes. So you can borrow one hole, which makes that eight. And when you borrow one hole, just think about how many 18ths did you just borrow? If you borrowed one, you just borrowed 18 18ths. This is our 8 and this is our 1, so we still have 9. We've just taken one of the 1s away from the 9 so that we have more 18ths. And so then you can rewrite this as 8 and the 10 18ths and the 18 18ths you just borrowed are 28 18ths. And from that we're subtracting 15 18ths. And so now not only do we have like terms, do we have a common denominator, but we can also subtract 15 eighteenths from 28 eighteenths to get 13 eighteenths. And then 8 minus 0 is just 8. And I'm thinking I did something wrong, but no, I guess not. For some reason I thought this fractional part needed to be simplified in this problem, um, but, it, but it does not because there, 13 of course is prime. So the only factors of 13 are 1 and 13. And 13 is not a factor of 18 because 18 is not a multiple of 13. And so 8 and 13 18 is the simplest form of this mixed number. And when I look over here, I see one right away. So that gives me confidence that I, that I have the correct difference. Now, you're not required to do the shading part, but please, please at least make sure you find one of your, your answers somewhere on this grid. Um, if you want to do the shading part, the 
the code for problem number 15 is to shade the upper left half like this. And so everywhere I see 8 and 13 eighteenths, there are probably quite a few of them. If you shade it that way, then um, you do that with every problem and you'll get a, an interesting pattern on this grid. Okay, thank you for watching the video. I'll see you tomorrow.